Hello everyone, welcome to a new class in Horta Americas TV. My name is Carla Garcia, I am Horta Americas Technical Service, and today we're going to learn about substrates in hydroponics. So uh, let me start providing you an outline of today's presentation. Uh, first of all, I will teach you about the advantage of the use of substrates um, and how to recognize a good substrate. So for this, we need to learn about the physical properties and the chemical properties of substrates. Uh, by the end, I will uh, just provide you some options of high quality substrates that we have in Hort Americas. So what are the advantages of the use of substrates? So first of all, in hydroponics, uh, we don't use soil. Uh, this means that we don't need land. And uh, we use substrates instead of soil. Uh, so this means that we can uh, grow plants in any space we want where we, can, where, where we can create the ideal conditions for growing plants. So that will be the first advantage. But uh, speaking about the root zone, um, when we're using substrates, we will have more control over the root zone. So the environment in the root zone will be uh, more uniform and consistent in comparison to uh, soil. Uh, this will help you to calculate a more precise irrigation and also will provide you more control and consistency over your production. How can we recognize a good quality substrate? So this is a very important question. So let me show you uh, the characteristics that you need to take care of when, when selecting a substrate. Uh, we will speak about the physical properties that you need to check and also the chemical properties. Uh, physical properties. We will speak about the porosity, uh, water holding capacity, and drainage. So these three, are uh, very, important, very, very important physical properties that you need to check in order to select the best option for your crop and also for uh, your hydroponic system. So the porosity is the total volume of air present in the substrate. So uh, this will provide you information about uh, the gas exchange that will be happening at the root zone. Um, uh, the roots need to respire and different crops have different needs in porosity levels. Um, usually when we have larger particles, we will have more porosity. When we have uh, uh, smaller particles, we'll have less porosity. So uh, air porosity will provide, will provide you the information about how much, how much oxygen will be available at the root zone. Uh, it's very important to check uh, the crop that you're using and the requirements of this crop because there are some crops that are very specific uh, and have very specific response to porosity. For example, I have here a picture of a strawberry. So a strawberry is a plant that demands uh, high porosity levels in substrates. And uh, in this picture, I'm showing you two different cultivars, Camino Real and Albion. So these two cultivars are very popular, uh, very popular uh, strawberry cultivars. Um, in, and in here we can see uh, different pots with different substrates. So all these plants were grown at, with the same environmental condition, just different substrates. So uh, what is the purpose of this picture? This picture uh, has the purpose just to show you how different the plant can grow and develop in different substrates. So um, this will teach you the importance of selecting the best substrate for your crop. Um, in here, for example, I have 100% cocoa, coconut core. Uh, this doesn't mean that this will be the results uh, if you use coconut core in a strawberry because we have now different options of coconut core and we have uh, some mixes that are developed for uh, strawberry and uh, they are made from coconut core. So just um, keep in mind that this picture is just to show you how different can be the response of the plant to the substrate, uh, but uh, you can find the, the, the best option. Uh, for example, in Coco, we have multiple options. 
But in here we can see uh, that at least this kind of cocoa it wasn't good for, for the strawberry. And also we can see uh, how the plant uh, developed very different um, depending on the substrate that's being used. So um, just keep in mind, it's very important to select the right substrates. If you don't have the right substrate, then you will have bad results or will have, you will have more prob probability to have bad results. Moving to water holding capacity. So water holding capacity is the capacity that your software has to retain water. Um, this will be very related to uh, the hydroponic system that you use and also to the crop that you're using. Because uh, the hydroponic system, um, in it, we have different kind of system that demands uh, different water holding capacity levels. For example, uh, we have Dutch buckets. Uh, the Dutch bucket systems are uh, systems that demands a good drainage, so you can uh, uh, reuse the water and do multiple irrigations per day. Uh, so usually for Dutch bucket, we uh, use uh, software with high porosity. For example, in here I have, uh, I have perlite, which is a software that, is, um, that we know that has very, very high porosity. Uh, but if we compare uh, the use of, of high porosity substrates with other systems, for example, in here we have a drip irrigation. Usually in drip irrigation system, we need or we look for a substrate that holds more water. Uh, so um, you always need to check which uh, system are you using and uh, which is uh, the demand of water that, the, uh, that this system uh, will require. So usually uh, the substrate should retain about uh, 50 to 65 percent of the moisture as minimum. Uh, this is to satisfy the water requirements of your plant but also taking account of the system, the hydroponic system that you're using um, to see if you really need a substrate that, that retains water of, or if you need a substrate that can provide you a better drainage uh, so that your system can keep functioning better. So moving to chemical properties. Uh, so. Uh, speaking about chemical properties, we will speak about the cation exchange capacity, which is very related to the chemical stability of your nutrient solution. And also we will speak about pH. So the cation exchange capacity is the total capacity of the substrate to hold exchangeable cations. So in other words, uh, the cation exchange capacity uh, will provide you information about how much your substrate can change or make more, um, I mean, your nutrient solution can change more and make your system a little bit uh, less stable uh, when you have a higher cation exchange capacity. Usually in hydroponics, we look for a low cation exchange capacity. I know that this is different from soil. Usually in soil, we look for a high cation exchange capacity. But in hydroponics, if you want to have a more consistency in your EC and your pH, and also uh, something very important is that in hydroponics, the purpose of hydroponics is to provide better nutrition to your plant. So that is why different recipes are developed. So what we want is to provide that recipe to your crop. And so we don't want the, the substrate to get involved in this, to change the, the, nutrient, the, the, the nutrients that you are already delivering to your crop. So that is why the cation exchange capacity of the substrate uh, should be low. And usually uh, we relate uh, low cation exchange capacity to uh, the quality of the substrate. So high quality substrates we will have uh, a low cation exchange capacity. And this will provide you a more stability, uh, a, more, a more stable system uh, in, in, your, in your crop.
So how can you check um, the cation exchange capacity of your substrate? There are different, uh, different um, ways to do it. Uh, one is uh, using your EC sensor, your electrical conductivity sensor. Um, so you can check uh, your substrate uh, by using the still water and uh, reading the EC levels, which should be zero. And uh, then uh, use the distilled water to irrigate uh, or soak your, your substrate and uh, um, make a drainage and then uh, read the EC levels of the drainage. So uh, the reading should be very similar or should be the same in order to uh, say that your substrate has a low, a low cation exchange capacity. You can usually ask to, to the person that is selling the substrate, um, which are the, char the characteristics of the substrate. And I recommend you to check those characteristics when you uh, receive all your material before using it in your product. Uh, now speaking about pH, so uh, pH is very important for plants. It's, uh, it, it was make uh, the nutrients available to the plant. So if, if you have a pH out of the range, the plant cannot take nutrients. And in hydroponic system, uh, usually uh, the pH tends to go up. That is what will normally happen. So um, when we're usual, when, when we're using when we are using substrates, uh, we need always to uh, check which are the needs of our crop regarding the pH. Um, uh, usually, if you if we have a crop with low pH requirements, uh, we will select a substrate that will provide you uh, at least five to uh, 6.5 in pH. Uh, this is because the system by itself tends to, to rise the pH. So in order to have a system that will be easy, easier to control, uh, you will try to match uh, the needs of your crop with the pH of the substrates. So always check the requirement of your plants because the pH is always crop specific, but the recommendation is to have at least a substrate with a pH between five and 6.5. So uh, what are the benefits of uh, using all the information that you are learning in these slides? Uh, if you have um, a good substrate and if you invest in good, uh, in good substrate, with, in high quality substrate, uh, then uh, your system will be more stable and uh, you can use more standardized uh, practices. You can, um, you can also calculate fertilization and irrigation and have more consistency in your results. Uh, because the pH and the C, the EC levels would be uh, more, uh, more stable. So it's a, a very good investment to, um, to get high quality substrates uh, in your hydroponic production. So in North Americas, we have uh, different substrates. Uh, one of the substrates that we uh, that we sell is Grodan. Uh, this is one of the best substrates that we have. Um, Grodan is made of Rockel, and Rockel is a substrate that is recognized for its log bulk density. And also, uh, one of the characteristics of Rockel is that uh, the cation exchange capacity of Rockel is zero which is very, very nice. And uh, is very hard to find these characteristics, in, in, this characteristic in other, in other substrates. Also has very good porosity levels. It has very high uh, water holding capacity, which is very nice when you're doing transplants. And also when, we're, when you are doing uh, the, the whole production in your crop. Uh, the pH of, is of seven, which is very nice pH. And um, as I mentioned before, the cation exchange capacity is zero. So in here, I'm showing just uh, results from uh, experiment uh, where uh, 
where different, uh, different results of the cation exchange capacity of different substrates are shown. And you can see how the rock coal is, uh, is the only substrate that has zero uh, cation exchange capacity. So this means that rock coal will provide you a very stable, uh, very stable environment to grow your plants. So uh, we have different options from Grodan. Uh, we have from uh, Bluk uh, sizes where you can do transplants. And also we have slabs which, where you can do the full production, for example, for buying crops. And uh, we have a different kind of slabs. Uh, we have uh, different options depending on your experience um, uh, because uh, the different slab that we have have different drainage qualities. So uh, this can provide you a tool uh, to help you to maintain uh, your plants more vegetative or more uh, gener gener generative. Uh, so please ask us uh, which, which kind of crop are you growing and we can help you to select uh, the best kind of, of ropple in this case, the best kind of product from Grodan for you. So you can use um, Grodan and Rockle for growing a different kind of crops. Uh, a lot of people use uh, these for, for leafy greens for NFT and uh, deep water culture systems. And also uh, is, very, is very useful for uh, growing vine crops too. Other option that we have in Horta Americas is a coconut core from Giffy. So uh, Giffy is a brand that is organic. So uh, pay attention if you're interested in organic production. Uh, uh, Giffy offers you uh, all, all the products that you need from transplant to, um, to all, the, all the products that you need for the whole cycle of your production. So the coconut core uh, is a substrate that can, that can be really different. So pay attention to the coconut core that you select. Uh, because uh, coconut core can, can retain a lot of salts. If you get a coconut core that is not good, that the quality of the, of the product is not good, uh, then you will have some issues uh, trying to control in your EC or your, uh, your coconut core will, will have, by the beginning of your production, a lot of salts. So um, if you get high quality coconut core, uh, you won't, won't be, uh, you, you won't need uh, to uh, rinse your, your substrate with water. Uh, you can use it from the beginning into your crop. So Jiffy offers that. Uh, Jiffy is a high quality product. Uh, offers a pH between uh, 5.6 and 6.6. It has very good aeration and also water holding capacity. And also coconut core is a, is a substrate that is also known because uh, the price of coconut cores is also nice. So these are the different products that we offer in Horta Americas. As I told you, we have options for make your transplant and also uh, in all the stages of the development, including uh, the whole production. Uh, we have uh, slabs uh, from, or grow bags from Jiffy, where you can grow uh, all kinds of vine crops, uh, like cucumbers or tomato. And remember that all of this is, uh, is organic. So if you are doing or thinking or, or doing uh, organic production, uh, Jiffy is a great, great option for you. And uh, by the end, I have the expanded clay. So expand, expanded clay is very useful for uh, systems where you need uh, good drainage. As I mentioned before, one of the systems that demands good drainage is a Dutch bucket. In here, you can see a picture uh, of, of the Dutch bucket system. Uh, this picture, you can find it in one of our blogs if you're in, interested in, 
in uh, Dutch Pocket uh, production and uh, how to make the system, uh, please go and check the blog of Heart Americas. We are always uh, getting new information in there and you can find this picture with all the, all the, um, all the things uh, in, uh, in the system, all the products that you need to make uh, this system work. So uh, the spandex light is a high porosity, high porosity substrate. Uh, it has high cation exchange capacity in comparison to other, to, to other substrates, but it's still good for hydroponics. Uh, and it's very useful and also has a very good price. So those are the, the options that we have in Hort Americas. We also have more options in substrates. Uh, so please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, here is my email. Uh, please don't hesitate to shoot me with questions regarding any kind of substrate. Uh, we can uh, provide you assistance in selecting uh, the best substrate for your crop and also for your hydroponic system. So if you have any doubts about the hydroponic system that you need to use or how to select uh, the substrate for your hydroponic system or for your plant, uh, please uh, contact me. Uh, this, is my, this is my email, technical service um, at hortamericas.com. Uh, we are happy to assist you. So this is a picture of the whole group. Uh, this is me. I'm not showing me in the video right now, but I will be happy to assist you. Please contact us for any questions. Goodbye.